Five. It can never be the duty of one man to be concerned in more than one revolution. But Daniel Shays and the farmers of western Massachusetts didn't agree. They were indeed concerning themselves with a second rebellion. They had tried the way of conventions, petitions, and letters to their elected leaders. They had tried to seek justice legally, and they had been ignored. They viewed lawyers and they viewed judges in the same way as they viewed the Eastern politicians. These were men out to suck their blood. Shays still had no way to pay his debts to the businessmen of Eastern Massachusetts and was faced with the threat of imprisonment, crushing poverty, and the loss of his farm. To feed his family, he had been forced to sell his most cherished belonging, the sword he had received from the Marquis de Lafayette. Fortunately, Daniel Shays still had one sword left, the cutlass he had carried in the Battle of Bunker Hill. And now he sharpened it again in preparation for a new battle. In the late fall of 1786, Daniel Shays began to muster and train an army. Among them were many of the men he had fought with in the Revolution. The Massachusetts veterans of the Revolution who joined Shays' rebellion uh, put the hemlock in their hat when they went off to war to fight against British tyranny. I mean, it was symbolic. This is the new tyranny that they're fighting against. The poor and oppressed of Massachusetts had desperately needed a leader. Now they had one, Daniel Shays.